and I posted in this Facebook group for like Cambridge students selling tickets, being like, hi guys, then anyone have a ticket for something on board? And this guy messaged me saying, I've broken a leg, I can't go to Pembroke May Ball anymore. And I bought his ticket for like less than half the price. So like two hours before the May Ball. Hi everyone, this is the Oxford and Cambridge project. I'm Opportune Simon and today we have Ilya Carey with us. Ilya is a third year student at Jesus College studying natural sciences and more specifically biological natural sciences. Ilya started a YouTube channel at the start of this year to give advice about Cambridge University applications and share what life is like at the university. Ilya's Cambridge advice. We'll put the link in the bio, go check it out. <laughs> Aside from being a YouTuber, Ilya is a busy student managing to get top grade in his course, as well as juggling different committee positions in various student organizations. Hi, Ilya. Thanks so much for taking some of your busy time uh, with <laughs> us to film the podcast. Well, oh, thank you very much for reminding me. <laughs> You're joining us from your Cambridge room, is that right? You're in Cambridge currently? Not at the moment, actually. No, I've been at home uh, since Christmas in Canterbury in Kent, but hopefully soon I can move back in Cambridge. Around lockdown, when it was announced in January, they said, uh, unless you have a very compelling reason, you can't come back. And I don't have any compelling reasons at the moment. Fair enough. How we tend to start these episodes now uh, is with a quick fire round. And basically, I'm just going to go through a few questions uh, and you don't have to give any reasoning. We just want one straight answer and then we'll move on. Um, so without further ado, first question is, what's your favorite study spot at Jesus College? My room. What's your least favorite part about Natsuki? Uh, memorizing stuff. Where can you get the best food in Cambridge? Oh, um... Jesus College uh, Hall. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Both. Cats or dogs? Again, a bit of both. And YouTube or Insta? You can't say both. YouTube. Tinder or Netflix? Netflix. Formal or college bar? Ooh, formal. And then we have to end this, the study, marry, ban game. Uh, so it's kind of like the kiss, marry, kill game, but for colleges of Cambridge, where would you choose to study? Where would you have your wedding ceremony? And which college would you just ban altogether? Okay, um, I'm gonna ban Girton. Okay. Um, I'd marry at Jesus because that's my college. And I would study at Trinity because it's prestigious. Oh, all great answers. Answers. Thank you, Ilya. This is done. All good. Um, and we'll get back to like, obviously, all of these kind of snippets of answers, especially doing like the Natsuki stuff. I'm sure um, a lot of people are curious to know how you can get it first, even though you don't like memorizing stuff. So <laughs> all the tips to come later. But first, I think it would be great if you just uh, run us through your background, your life in high school, and um, what got you to apply at Cambridge. My background. Okay, so like I said, I live in Canterbury, in Kent, and um, I've been living here since year nine, so year nine to sixth form, I was here. But before that, I actually lived in Belgium for a bit, so my first two years of secondary school or in Belgium where I went to local Flemish schools. Uh, and before that, I kind of moved between England and Belgium. Um, I've always been quite interested in, in science and nature. And this kind of developed, so GCSEs, I did quite well in sciences. Then at A-levels, I, I chose to do science A-levels. And I wanted to go somewhere where it might be, be somewhere good. Um, so I thought, yeah, I'd apply to Cambridge. Cool. And do you remember the application process at all? Um, obviously, you talk about your personal statement and in your channel, 
but yeah can you kind of run us through a bit how that went and how the interview day went uh, at Jesus okay so the application process um, Oxford and Cambridge and like other universities will have to apply earlier via UCAS and the deadline for applications is usually the 15th of October but generally your schools might say send your application like a week or two in advance you don't want to send it right like on the deadline so for me for example I sent my application by the end of September um, as part of which you'll have to do your personal statement mainly in um, filling out forms and then for Cambridge, no Oxford, but for Cambridge, you have to do the supplementary application questionnaire or answer questionnaire, uh, the mm -hmm. SAQ, where they ask you a few more questions um, about you. And um, they also ask you what you've covered in your lessons so far, and that can help them decide what to ask you in your interview. Um, and then maybe a month or so later, um, I had my entrance exam, which is specific to my course. Um, some courses don't have entrance exams, I think, but um, mine does, which um, was actually quite a tough exam. The content was difficult, but the main difficulty was just the timing. They didn't give you a lot of time, so you had to be really, really quick with your answers. Is that just to test you and to see like the test is kind of impossible to answer everything especially at like coming from a high school level so they're just seeing how far you can go i think in terms of difficulty it is possible to answer all the questions but it's just in terms of timing that you just don't have enough time and for me for example um you choose which sections to do and i did like maths chemistry and biology sections and i chose to put a lot of effort into the chemistry and biology sections and then the math section, I only got to even look at a quarter of the questions. I ran out of time before I looked at the rest. And I did that kind of intentionally because I, uh, I was doing further maths A level. So I kind of felt I was showing I can do maths, which is why I, I guess tactically, tactically, tactically didn't do well in that section. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, but it worked for me, I guess. Yeah, fair enough. And then was that the same day as your interview? No, so the entrance exam is uh, for me, it was 2nd of November, and the interview is a month later. They decide to give you an interview after the entrance exam, and I think they might consider your entrance exam score when giving out an interview. But for Cambridge, I think about 80% of people who apply get an interview, so most people will probably get an interview. Um, and then in terms of my interview, so I had two interviews, and the first one was very much an academic conversation and it wasn't scripted, I would say. The first question I was asked was, what kind of biology do you like? And we just proceeded to talk about um, evolution and behavior. And yeah, it wasn't scripted, although they asked me questions every now and then, it wasn't at all prepared in advance. Mm -hmm. But the second interview was a bit more scripted where the first one or two questions were about stuff that was in my reference and personal statement and some questions are a bit technical. And then the rest of that interview, about half of that second interview, I was talking about a science project I did um, at school. Great, and then you obviously got into Natsuki and you really like it. What are you focusing on uh, in third year? Because I'm guessing for like most Cambridge courses, first and second year are quite broad, quite general, and then you tend to focus on what you like in third year? Yeah, so what I'm doing this year is zoology. And as part of that, I get to choose all sorts of modules. So in fact, although I'm doing zoology, only one out of the four modules I do are based at the zoology department. And so the other stuff I do, uh, like modules from the genetics department, the biochemistry department, and the bioinformatics department. Um, so I'm doing, a, I guess, a spread of things, but I have specialized in zoology. Cool. And what does that include? Do you have like practicals or stuff like that? Obviously, you can't go to them now, but what's the process usually? Usually for third year, um, you do a project or a dissertation. And as part of the project, you do a lot of practical stuff. Um, in, in first and second year, usually are practicals as part of your, your course. Uh, but this year, usually you don't have practicals unless it's for your project. Um, although for my bioinformatics module, we have online coding practicals. So they're not like proper practicals, but they're, they're called practicals, for example. 
I guess so much has changed given that you're literally going to university in your own house uh, but yeah like what would you recommend students get do you need like I don't know what what's the kind of equipment <laughs> that uni students need now mm. well I'm definitely much less productive now than I usually am and there's a few things I've done which I think are helpful for example I think staying to kind of routine to some extent is helpful so I'm trying to wake up at the same time every day and that has been very helpful, I feel, just the consistency of waking up all the time and makes me well rested as well. Uh, one thing I do also is I try to take consistent breaks, like I try to do um, 25 minute study, five minute breaks at the Pomodoro technique. And um, during each break, I'll like make sure to look out the window for 20 seconds at it, like somewhere quite far away, just to make sure my eyes don't get strained. Because if I just didn't do that, my, like it would just hurt looking at a screen all day. And stay fit and talk to friends and all the good things oh my god you're so efficient it's kind of scary <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not as efficient as I sound uh, but I, I try to be definitely and do you feel like it's that um, efficiency that made you get a first like I saw you were let me get this correctly in first year you were fourth in the whole year of Natsuki and you were you had some top marks in Jesus entirely. So yeah, do you think it's up to the routine? Do you think it's up to the knowledge or is it like exam strategy as well? I'll just clarify that I was fourth in one of my modules. So not like overall, uh, but just one of my modules. Um, what Still pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in first year, I, first year is definitely when I peaked in like efficiency. Uh, for example, my first term, Michaelmas first year, I watched two episodes of Netflix in that whole time. I didn't watch any other TV or Netflix, but like these days I can exceed that in a day. So I definitely peaked in, in, in first year. Um, so yeah, I think just the excitement of being at Cambridge at first really drove me to work hard and be efficient. And also this is one of the main reasons I think I got a first is just using Anki flashcards. Uh, I hadn't heard of them until Easter term, like final term. In, in first year but as soon as I like heard about them I started using it and it I think that's like the main reason I, I got first it just made learning and memorizing so much easier and given that my course had so much content to learn being able to memorize stuff easily was really really helpful and I, I focused quite a lot on understanding content as opposed to blindly memorizing it which is something I did at school as well I always focused on understanding the content first and then doing past papers, which maybe might, might not be the best strategy, but I found that it's quite helpful, especially at university where it's not about hitting the mark scheme, it's about understanding the content and showing that you understand the content. It's definitely a good, the good strategy, um, given that obviously it's not, it shows little results in like the short term because it takes a while to understand everything, but that's obviously what you need for life anyway. So obviously a great skill for university. And if you started practicing that in high school, then that's the best solution. How will exams go this year and how did they go last year? Because obviously normally you're all together in like a huge hall. Everyone just sits down, can be different courses. And then you just like start writing when the bell rings. How does it go now? Last year, the exams didn't actually count. So they were like mock exams essentially. And they were online timed and closed book but they couldn't enforce that it was timed and closed book so a lot of students essentially just kind of took as long as they wanted and did it open book because there weren't any consequences because the marks didn't count for anything and no one could find out this year it's my final year so the exams will actually count and the format still is actually under review, I believe, because students want them want it to change. But the format right now is that it will be online, open book, but timed. So still three hours um, for most of my exams. But there's calls to change that um, because last year for finalists for my course, they had 24 hours for each exam and students want uh, that to be the same this year. But right now, the exam is three hours open book online. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming Natsuki has a lot of like math in it and, you know, writing whole equations and stuff. How does that 
go? Do you have like a software that you're using? Obviously you're doing coding as well. Well, actually this year, nearly everything I've done has been essay based and similarly last year, pretty much all I did was essay based because of the modules I chose. In general, the biological modules are like pretty much essay based. Um, I think there will be one or two maths questions this year and I think we'll just write them out on paper and scan them in. But nearly everything I do will be essay based. Cool. Okay. So you're lucky on that point. I'm sure a lot of people, what's the other options if you don't do um, bio and ASCII, you will do physical natural sciences? Yeah. So you can go into physics, physics, maths, chemistry, um, geology. Um, there's also HPS, which is history and philosophy science, which is very humanities based. But yeah, like you said, you can go into the physical side, which will be much more maths and physics based. I'm not sure how they will be doing it, but it sounds logical to me that if it if they have to do like math questions, they'll do it on paper and scan it in or something like that. And what's your kind of career trajectory? Uh, I saw that you had applied and been accepted for masters, so that's great. Uh, but I don't know. Do you have an end goal? What's the kind of job that you want to get into after? I haven't completely planned out my career, which is something I don't think is a good idea, good idea necessarily, because it's so hard to predict what you're doing next year, yet alone in your whole career. Uh, but right now, I think I'll stay in academia for now at least. I think it'd be nice to do a PhD. I just haven't chosen what to do it in and where to do it. Um, but for now, I'll stay in research and academia, I feel. And you're staying in Jesus, which is your college for uh, the undergraduate. You're staying there for your master's. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about Jesus. This is a college that I love, that I recommend to anyone who's kind of applying to Cambridge because I think it's so well-rounded. I guess, first things first, could you describe Jesus in like a sentence for someone who's never been there to Cambridge? It's pretty, it's friendly, it's sporty. It's got a lot of nature and it's quite central, but not central central. It's like outer central, which I think is a convenient location. Yeah, definitely. All the good things ticked. Um, what's your favorite thing about Jesus? Like, why did you, why did you choose it when you applied? There are a few things which made me choose Jesus. Some of them were not good reasons. For example, I did look at the admission statistics, which wasn't a good way to choose a college. Um, I, I noticed that the ratio of like applicants to offers for my course was looking quite good. So I thought, oh, I'll take advantage of that. But then the year I applied, there's a massive spike in applicants. So the ratio was like completely distorted. Uh, but anyway, that's part of the reason, but also because I visited it and it was a, um, just a very beautiful college. And yeah, it's just a really nice college really. Yeah, and I guess like everyone in Cambridge kind of agrees that the feel of the college is you know really friendly um it's yeah architecturally pretty but not like stuck up like some old pretty colleges might be <laughs> how do you feel like the the college experience shapes your experience at the university do you think that is quite important i think that the college you choose does definitely have a big effect on your university experience i can imagine that going to a big prestigious college like St. John's or Trinity will be a different experience to getting to a modern college like Fitzwilliam, for example. I think wherever you go, you probably will still enjoy your experience, but that the experience will just be different, I'd say, but not necessarily bad, just, just different. And there's also so many factors which you can't account for. For example, the people who will be studying with you, that's something that will vary every year um, and again that's something that will strongly affect your university experience. Another thing that you that is great for going to Jesus personally I feel like having the Jesus Mabel and having the opportunity to get tickets firsthand because Jesus Mabel is is kind of renowned to be like a first year ball because it's great for I don't know the, that first-hand experience and it's also on the same night as St. John's, which is like a difficult thing nice to get Trinity. tickets to. Oh, St. Nice Trinity, yeah. So a difficult like college to get tickets to, whereas 
if you're a fresher at Jesus, you just get your hands on first because generally college members um, can buy tickets before the rest of the university. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely one thing to like about it. I also quite like, it's still like the library, I think is a big, the library in your college will play a big part in your life, uh, I guess, if you like to study there. I'll be honest, in, not in mine. <laughs> I, don't <laughs> okay, usually go, I don't usually study in the library. What, you just like the peace and quiet of your room? Well, it's just kind of the effort going to the library and also the atmosphere, like seeing everyone else study kind of gives you, stresses you out because no matter when you're at the library, there'll be people studying, which gives this false impression that people are studying all the time. It isn't true. And just because you're in the library doesn't mean you're studying. Like you'll see maybe your friends studying all the time in the library when they might actually might not be that productive. So when in my first year, I didn't study in the library in, in exam time, which is when it was really stressful. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that definitely helped me a lot. And like, I remember I, I saw people in the library studying all the time, yet I ended up doing better than them, which to me showed that you don't need to be in the library to do well. Yeah, that's such a good point about, you know, the, the pressure of seeing other people work and they might actually just be on Facebook like you don't know and it just yeah plays tricks on your mind which you definitely don't need to in exam term there's already enough pressure on your back so yeah that is a great point and obviously you can study anywhere anyway there was a really cool website um, I can't remember the name but I'll put the link below where it used to compare every library in Cambridge or like study spot so, the study finder or something like that yeah exactly so you could put like oh i like to study with noise around me like background noise and then it would suggest a cafe that has a really good wi-fi and stuff so that's one for people to to know but also your room is the og study spot mm. and i'm very lucky this year because i actually i've got a double room so i've got a bedroom and a study room so it's nice to be able to separate where i sleep and where i study <sighs> It's so such a shame that you're missing out on this double room. <laughs> yeah, it really there. is. <laughs> is there any chance that you'll be able to like go back to Cambridge? Yeah, I think definitely within a few weeks, we'll see some changes in like the regulations, which might mean it's possible to move back. And at the moment, the university is planning on us being present in Easter term in terms of examinations. I think that if we're not in Cambridge, they will change the format of the exams again. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think soonish we, we will be able to move back. Cool, amazing. And that probably means that all your social life will take, like will kind of come back because you are doing so many things. You're mm. literally, let me, let me just quickly run through them. You're doing climbing, you're doing squash, you're doing the choir at Jesus you do it in the Belgian society in the Annan club I had to google what that was uh it's apparently looking at fossils and kind of paleontology kind of stuff yeah yeah we're just gonna go go with that uh you're doing the Cambridge Union you're in athletics and not to name all the other student societies like um cellular agriculture again something that i didn't know about um yeah mountaineering club climbing club all that stuff how do you have time to fit everything in i think i'm not that involved in some of them anymore uh, so i did i was part of um, the college casual choir not the chapel choir like the, the casual choir in first year uh, which is fun and then last year i was part of the Anning Club, which is like the fossil hunting club. I kind of thought it'd be funny to join that. So I, I was like uh, on the committee for a year. Um, and then, yeah, still there. I'm, I'm on quite a few uh, societies this year. Obviously because of the pandemic, there's much less to do. Um, but before the pandemic, how I'd managed them was just trying to be efficient. And also some roles are not that much work. For example, um, being, the treasurer or a secretary for a society, I think is usually not that much work, which is what I have for some societies. Um, although I was a social secretary last year for the Belgian society, which was, again, actually quite a lot of work, um, but just by trying to be efficient and yeah, just trying to be efficient in the managing time, you can, you can do it. It's kind of a good way to do it. You have 
um, different societies in different years because obviously that allows you to try out different things and um, there were friends in my year who tried to do uh, each sport that was available in Cambridge and have like a taster day for all of them so obviously you know that it won't allow you to go very much in depth is in any of them but you get to say that like you've tried out I don't know trampolining or you know that kind of stuff so yeah, really good. trampolining that was quite fun <laughs> oh nice I wish I did I just didn't I don't know sign up <sighs> total waste <laughs> One thing also is that I like people do inevitably fall behind on work, and that's something people do tactically sometimes. They kind of take advantage of the whole Cambridge experience by doing all the social stuff and having fun, fall behind on work, but then catch up on the holidays, which to an extent I think is like reasonable. Yeah, a lot of, um, I guess, university sports team or busy committees will kind of tell you, oh, uh, we do have, you know, competitions on Wednesdays. Oh, it won't be every Wednesday, but sometimes you'll have to miss lectures and you'll have to rearrange supervisions um, if you want to make the team, which is fair enough. Like generally you can rearrange supervisions anyway and lectures, you just have to have a friend to give you the notes or I guess now that it's kind of online, it's easier. Don't know whether Cambridge will ever keep that format or will keep lectures filmed much i know that in the computer science department they did actually so yeah for my first year um some modules were filmed chemistry was filmed for example which is fair enough because 500 people would be in that lecture hall as in okay we're meant to be there but not all of them turned up and there's just so many people who might be ill or busy or something i think it's good to have recorded them hopefully cambridge will kind of keep both format after the whole pandemic um stops I mean, it's great to see that you're um, juggling everything together. And I mean, a lot of people agree with me in saying that uh, your content is great. You've just hit 1K <laughs> subscribers. So um, congrats. And obviously everyone can go check out all your videos. Um, they're super quick to watch and so useful for anyone who's looking to apply. Um, so Thank you kind of looking back at that what made you start it and obviously I believe that I think I saw somewhere that your college mom was Paige Y the other YouTubers so has that affected your decision is she kind of helping out or helped out at the start uh right so I started my YouTube in August and that's because I think I just had uh so much free time because there wasn't much to do and at Cambridge, I was surrounded by people who were successful on YouTube. So Paige Wise, my college aunt, so nearly my college mum. So uh, seeing how someone who is like quite like, relatively close to me be so successful. Um, and there's like loads of other YouTubers who like I know at Cambridge and just seeing their success makes you think, OK, I think I can do this as well. So that I think kind of inspired me to start. Um, and it is a very steep learning curve, like you're learning how to edit videos, which I, I didn't know how to edit before, and uh, getting the gear and all that kind of stuff. It Like my first video took so long to do, but eventually I've got more and more and more efficient to an extent where I could um, like write the script, shoot a video, edit it and publish it in like an afternoon, maybe even. So like it's, I've definitely got a lot faster from taking weeks to half a day um, and I think part of the reason uh, being successful is like my content is helpful but also I've like um, taken advantage of the connections I have like I'll ask my friends like um, Paige Y and Astrid and people to promote my channel which again has helped me a lot uh, and also because I, I try to make content which is what the people want um, so I can get more watch time if I didn't have timestamps in my videos, but by putting timestamps, I make it easier for people to see what they want. So it's like I'm sacrificing something to help the people, which I think is helping me grow my channel, for example. Are you kind of in any acting societies or are you doing any of that at Cambridge as well? I've done acting at Cambridge, although this term actually, uh, there was a Footlights Smoker, um, which is like uh, basically some sketches that they did. And I actually submitted that interview video and they included it 
in uh, that smoker. And they also asked me to edit a video, the, the smoker. So I, I edited that for the footlights. But other than that, I haven't done um, any acting at university. So looking back at everything you've done at Cambridge, do you have a specific time, a specific day, a specific memory that was like your happiest time and you want to share with us? I'm not sure I can think of the happiest time, but one very happy memory I have was in May week in first year. I was on the way back from, I think it was Pembroke, Maybull, um, which I kind of blagged a, a ticket to. I didn't have a ticket, but um, two hours beforehand, I posted in this Facebook group for like Cambridge students selling tickets, being like, hi guys, then anyone have a ticket for something, I'm, I'm bored. And this guy messaged me saying, I've broken a leg, I can't go to Pembroke, Maybull anymore. And I bought his ticket for like less than half the price. So like two hours before the Mayball. Oh my God. And you just went like, like that by yourself. Uh, well, my friends happened to be going as in friends from Pembroke. So I wasn't just alone, um, but that was very convenient. I know it was a, a cool Mayball. And then the morning after it must've been like six, 7 AM. I was like walking around Cambridge in like my uh, like fancy Mayball outfit. And I saw how Trinity College, one of the, the back doors was open. And usually it's really hard to get into Trinity College because the porters just don't let you in. But I saw the doors open, so I just walked in and walked around the college, that college. And it was just really pretty to see it like in the morning at 6 a.m. all alone, like in the sunlight. And uh, because I was like looking fancy, no one questioned me. Like I looked like I was in place there. Um, and, yeah, walked around and then yeah, went back to my room and went to bed. <laughs> Definitely a really cathartic moment, I guess it must have been. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Cambridge during May week, especially in the more early mornings where people are kind of walking back home, is such a, like it's such a special time. Like no one actually pauses and realizes like where they are, what they're doing is so like it's just so extravagant and so grandiose that like you maybe don't you forget it at the time uh, but having that moment of like peace and reflection just makes it really deep and on the other side of the coin is there anything that you did that makes you look back and say like oh I just regret doing that or I regret not knowing about this specific thing uh, well my regret is not knowing about Anki earlier because if I'd known about these flashcards at the start of first year, it would have made first year easier, I would say, because I, I just didn't know how to study and how, how to use, how, how to learn all that information uh, at the start. So I think it would have been easier if I'd known about it earlier. And I think it would have been cool if I'd made my YouTube earlier because that would mean it would be bigger by now. But I mean, still it's, it's done well, so that's good. Yeah, you can't do everything. I'm sure if you started your YouTube earlier, you wouldn't have had time for other things, you know? Is this a sponsored video, by the way? Is Anki a, a payable thing or is that free? Unfortunately, I'm not sponsored by Anki and it is oh. completely free on Mac, Windows and Android. Although for some reason, the App Store, you pay for it. But it, it is completely free. So uh, you don't have to say this is like sponsored. Good. Okay, I was just checking. Uh, but awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely go check it out because given that I still have graduated and you think the final exam is your final exam of your entire life. No, I still have exams for my job. So uh, we'll definitely be checking that out. You're in final year, you have a lot more knowledge than you had in first year. Are there any tips, not only for your past self, but I guess for future students who are applying you know, now or who have just received an offer, who are going to join, maybe still in times of COVID, what, what would you say to them as like a parting gift? Um, in terms of studying or like other stuff? Can be both, any. Okay, well in terms of studying, um, I'll just say it again, Anki, but also what I've been using to take notes is Notion, which um, I found good uh, in first year and second year I used OneNote which was just all I knew really but Notion I found was much better to take notes on uh, but in terms of university experience I would say at the very start of 
your um, like when you're a fresher try to get to know as many people as possible because when you're a fresher it's socially acceptable to go up to a stranger and be like hey what's your name which college are you at but as soon as you do that like a bit more into term that's kind of weird thing to do so i'd say yeah at the start try to get to know as many people as possible um which is like a good way to start making friends and yet just i guess now it's quite hard but try almost to socialize whenever you can because it's great to just get to know people and like there's really just cool people you meet at somewhere like cambridge and well it's like famous people like that there's people you meet who like whose parents or themselves are actually really famous. Like obviously um, um, Malala, although she's Oxford, like she is literally a Nobel Prize winner. And like my friend has like met her, which I think is like insane. Um, but yeah, there's people in my course whose parents have Nobel Prizes and that kind of stuff. So it's like, it's insane. I felt the same way when I was like just chatting to someone and then my friend would just come up to me and be like, you know, you just chatted to like the heir of, you know, a country or whatever and it's just like what is going on so yeah I, I would agree with you like doing that sort of meeting people and networking even though yeah. we hide this word we hate this word but it's so important uh to do it at the start because obviously it's more socially acceptable but also it's kind of the only time where everyone is kind of pushed to meet people anyway so everyone's going to be mm. super happy that you even like came up and talked to them mm. uh, and then it will help you so much in the long run like just meeting someone randomly it could be at smoking area of a club or it can be now online if you do like meet and greets with people from your college or for a university it's so helpful to know as many people because everyone will go on to do great things hopefully so yeah, <laughs> yeah they you can help each other and that's that's the beauty of it yeah that, that's why at the start of like in Michaelmas first year I, po I hosted quite a few parties because that's a great way to get to know people and um yeah but also fun yeah exactly you can host parties and also uh people will love you for it host formals if you can with like people from your course for example uh, that makes other people discover your college then they can reciprocate and get you to their colleges formal mm. uh, yeah great experiences yeah. All in I did try to do the formal challenge as well though COVID has uh, prevented uh, me from succeeding no how many colleges were you at maybe 10 or 12 or something like that that's still a good run like you're basically <laughs> halfway and then well COVID kind of came halfway in your uni years anyway? Yeah, it did. It did. It came um, after, immediately after Lent term in my second year. So mm. just passed halfway. Well, hopefully you can finish this challenge during your year at, of Masters at Cambridge. But in the meantime, I'm just going to say thank you so much, Ilya, for coming on this podcast and talking to us about your journey. I think so many people are curious to know more about you, uh, given that they know about your channel. So yeah, hopefully this gives them a great insight in your life. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me and uh, it was nice to virtually meet you. Hi everyone. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of the Oxford and Cambridge podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, why not like, share or subscribe to our channel as it really helps other people find our podcast.